Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra and welcome back to another Med School Mondays. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for a new video being uploaded every single Monday. Now let's get started. Today, we are gonna be discussing the MCAT and how I studied for it, what my schedule was, what researchers I used, and how I was able to do well enough the first time that I only had to take it once. So, first we're gonna start off with when should you take the MCAT? So if you are applying in the 2020 cycle, the latest you should take it is in June of 2020. I took mine June 1st, so anything past June is a little late because it takes a month to get your score back. So because I took it in the beginning of June, I got my score in the beginning of July, and that was still early enough that I could still submit everything on time. Whereas once you get into July and August, it is considered a little late. So I wouldn't take it anything later than June of the year you are applying for. If you're ahead of time, you're good. But if you are trying to do it at the last minute, I wouldn't do it any later than June. What books did I use to study? So the main two books are the Princeton Review and the Kaplan books. So I personally did research and found that both of the books were good. They both have pros and cons, but honestly, I don't think it matters which one you get. For me personally, I found out that it's cheaper to get an, a used edition from the year before. So I took the MCAT in 2019, but I got the books for 2018 and they were used. So I got an edition behind, which isn't bad. You can get an edition behind and still be fine. And then on Amazon, they actually let you rent the books. So I knew that I wasn't gonna need the books forever. Well, at least I hoped I wasn't gonna need it more than just the time I needed it for. So it let me rent them all the way up till the end of May. My test was June 1st, so it was perfect. And I initially was gonna rent the Kaplan books, but then when I went on to Amazon that day, the Kaplan books were sold out. So I ended up just getting the Princeton Review books and it was fine and it ended up only being $60. So I know if you buy them new, they're around like two to $300. So if you wanna save some money, then definitely rent an older edition and you should be fine. So what practice material do I recommend and what did I use? So I know all of the different third parties like Kaplan and Princeton Review have their own practice tests and their own practice material, but I would not recommend any of those. If you wanna get those, then by all means get it and it can be another extra tool to help you but those are not the most accurate to the real MCAT. Some are way harder than the real one is, some are way easier so your score is not accurate. But the most accurate practice material that I 100% recommend that you must, 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 must get is the official practice bundle on the AAMC website. This is the most accurate to the real test and it has everything you need I think it's around $268, but it is 100% worth it. Definitely get it, um, you won't regret it. And it comes with like three official practice tests and it comes with question bundles that you can use to make your own tests. And it is honestly amazing, that is what I used. So now for my schedule. I ended up getting the books in February and my test was in June, so it was about four months. I knew that I wanted six weeks of just all practice material, so I gave myself until about mid-April to finish the books. So there's seven books total. The only book I didn't read was Cars. Um, if you're not good at Cars, do not take my advice but I personally have always been decent at cars, so I really only needed to practice with the timing. So I felt like I didn't need to read the cars book, but if you are someone who needs help with cars, then I don't recommend skipping it. For the other six books, I basically assigned one to a day of the week. So I might've had Monday Bio, Tuesday Gen Chem, Wednesday Bio Chem, Thursday Orgo, Friday Physics. You know, I basically assigned a book and read a chapter a day. So I was reading all of them simultaneously and taking notes. And I did that all the way through April. I tried to give myself six weeks to do all practice material, but I ended up not really starting really until April 28th. So it was really like about a month I gave myself to do practice material, which I don't recommend. I have my schedule in front of me, so I'm actually gonna read it off. When I first researched on YouTube how to do well on the MCAT, the first video that pops up is a YouTuber named Care Beauty, I believe. Sorry if I mispronounced it, but I will link her channel down below. And she had a video um, discussing how she scored in like the 99th percentile of the MCAT. She did a schedule where she was taking a practice test one day and then the next day she was reviewing it, the practice test. So she was basically doing a practice test every other day for like three weeks straight. 
So I pretty much did that exact same schedule. She even had a Google Doc of a schedule to follow. So I'm gonna link her video so you can see all of that stuff, but I basically used every single thing she used. So I printed out a blank calendar <laughs> for the month of May and I basically wrote down everything I needed to be doing. They also have a sample test included in the practice bundle. So I took that on April 28th and I got a 4.93. So this was a month out before my test. So I was really, really nervous, like, whoa, like this is a lot harder than I expected. I didn't know what to expect, but I didn't expect it to be that difficult. So I was honestly shaken up, like, whoa, like I need to improve my score drastically in order to get a score, a decent enough score. I wasn't starting the every other day schedule yet just because I was working full time at a hospital. I was taking 18 credits and I had a lot going on and trying to study. I didn't have my full attention to MCAT, but I can see on my schedule that I had like a calc exam, a biochem exam, sociology final, a job interview. And then the week of May 6th through 10th was my finals week. So I had literally a final every single day that week. So I was basically just busy so i kind of didn't do anything and then it was mother's day weekend and i had to move out of school i was busy so monday may 13th of 2019 is when i finally was like okay it's may 13th my test is june 1st so i'm dedicating these next three weeks i'm not leaving the basement i've, I've locked myself in the basement spent eight to 12 hours a day down there didn't leave for anything and i was like i put my phone away no distractions i'm this is what i'm doing for the next three weeks and then i followed her schedule i made custom tests and if you want a more detailed explanation check her video but basically with the question packs you get in the practice bundle you can pull a certain amount of questions from each question pack and basically form your own practice test and score it yourself so the score isn't going to be completely accurate but it'll be a good representation of what you would get if it was a real test so that's what i was doing so i can see that i did a custom test on the 13th and then i spent the next two days reviewing and then i did an official practice test on the 16th and i got a 498 so this was the first official practice test and i got a 498 which still was very alarming because at this point i had two weeks to improve my score by like 10 points so i was like why am i not hitting a 500 this is very very alarming at this point and then I spent the next two days reviewing, then I did another custom test, and then I reviewed for two days, and another custom test, review, custom test, review, then I did an official practice test. The sample says I got a 493, the first official practice test I got a 498. The second official practice test was my biggest jump where I hit a 504, and at this point I was like, oh my god like i really that that week i did the most like i just remember going off that weekend i was so happy that i finally broke 500 and i really thought on that exam that i was just gonna get a 500 even like only go up two points but i went up six and i just remember feeling ecstatic like okay i don't have to reschedule my test like i can do this i can do this then the last practice test, i actually got a 502 i went down but i knew that i was just getting really burnt out at the end so i knew like i could do way better than that and I wasn't panicked at that point. How did I review each section? So I'll go over cars first because cars for me was my best section off the jump. The lowest I ever got in cars was like a 126. So for that, I honestly really just had to work on the speed because you don't have a lot of time to answer each question. So really it was just practice, practice, practice for me for that section and learning how to just read faster and answer questions faster. And I think the one tip I found online that I did do for that section was some people suggested quickly scrolling through and reading the questions for that passage before you start the passage and then like writing it down quickly. So it might have said like main topic, this quote, second paragraph, like it would say I would write down a keyword from each question just so I had that in my mind. Subconsciously, I was thinking about those questions while I was reading. So it would be easier for me to find the answer. And I think that's pretty much the only thing I did. Definitely practice cars. Like if you don't practice anything else, practice cars the most because it is very hard to read that fast. For practice exams, I tried to mirror the real MCAT as much as I could. So I wake up at eight, start my test and do the test the whole day. And I would wear my Beats um, because on the real exam, they give you noise blocking headphones, which can be really uncomfortable. So you have to get used to those. So I used my Beats, got used to having those on and I would spend the whole day doing that and I would take breaks with the same way the NCAT would. 
I would do nothing else the day I took the test. The next day when I would review, I would still wake up at eight and I would spend literally the entire day, more than probably the eight hours, probably more like 12 hours, just reviewing all the questions. So how I review for the other sections, for the two science sections, bio and chem, what I would suggest is on the, with the official practice bundle, they'll give you explanations to, to answers to see how they got it. But honestly, the AAMC answers are just so bad, like they don't really explain it well. But what you can do is if you Google the question that you just don't understand how they got it, so many other people on like Reddit or SDN have already answered it and already put up how they did it. So I would look up those to see. Like some of the questions you get wrong just because you didn't understand the question. So that is like, you can't really study for that just because you didn't understand. But some of the questions, I was getting wrong was just simply because I didn't know what it was asking. Like I didn't know the topic. So for those, I would write all of those topics down. So for example, the biochem section, maybe it was an amino acid question that I would have gotten right if I would have known what amino acid it was, or if it was an enzyme question, which I would have got right if I knew the enzyme. So all those topics I would write down on the sheet and then I would just search it. I would either find a video or um, I would find someone who could explain it or I would just find something where I understood it and I had this sheet so I could study it every day. And I did the same with Kim. Um, any Kim topic that I just simply forgot or just didn't know, I just had it all on the sheet. So every day when I would wake up, I would look at that sheet and try to memorize it. And then I would add more to more sheets and just constantly just study all the sheets that I kept getting wrong and that's how I would memorize that type of stuff. For physics, I didn't really study much for physics, but they don't give you any formulas for physics, so you have to memorize all the formulas for the test. So what I did do, I don't, I'm not sure the exact one I used, but if you Google physics um, formula sheet for MCAT, there's so many that pop up, so I just used one of them that I felt that was accurate and I just wrote all these out on a piece of paper and just memorized that formula sheet. The psychology, sociology section, this one is the one I feel like I improved the most on and that I knew the least about. I thought I was prepared for it, but I wasn't prepared at all. So this one literally is all vocabulary. It's literally all vocabulary. Every time I got a question wrong, I would do the same thing I did with the other section, write down the word I didn't know, and I just had a running list, like probably like six pages of all these terms I didn't know. And then I just would sit there and memorize them. And I would look them up and memorize them and write down the definition next to it. And there's also a lot of Quizlets. If you look up like psychology, sociology terms, MCAT Quizlet on Google, some people will have like a hundred terms that you need to know for the MCAT. So I would look at those too. So I started off with a 123 but I ended up jumping up to a 127 for psychology, sociology, and then on the real test, I got a 128. So these practices are really accurate on what you're gonna get on the real exam. So that's why I recommend them so much because your score is gonna be really close to this. Now onto the actual test day. The test starts at 8 a.m., but you have to be there by like 7.30 latest, I believe. But you know, most people get there at like seven. So make sure you get a good night's sleep. Um, don't study the day before. I don't think I ate anything. I might've had some of a banana, but I was too nervous to eat. There's a lengthy check-in process, but the best advice I have is just don't get too nervous because it can be really intimidating when you walk in, you see all these people. And also keep in mind, people are not there just for the MCAT. There's people taking a whole bunch of tests, but you had to seal up your phone and put it in a bag that you couldn't break the seal until your test was over. And I think you had to get fingerprinted and your picture taken. So it was a lot, but like I said, just don't be too intimidated because you will be okay. This is just, it's not just a test, but it is just a test. So you'll be okay. I did bring a lunch and I think I brought water. I made sure to use the bathroom before the test. And then um, I don't think you can have watches or anything on. And when you go in, they like search up your sleeves, up your shirt sleeves, up your pant legs and everything. So they search you every time you go in the room, they gave you a blank piece of paper, a scrap paper. And the first thing I would recommend, what I did was write all the physics formulas, just so you have that out the way. And any other acronyms or any like amino acids or anything important that you know is like something you can easily forget or just something you need to know, write it all down on the cheat sheet first. That's what I did just so I had it and that took the stress off. That's the reason practice tests are so important because it's literally muscle memory. You're training your body to be able to sit and take an eight hour test, which is very difficult. 
So by the time I got there, it wasn't, I was nervous about the questions, but I knew that I could do it because I had literally done it 20 times before. I knew I could sit for eight hour tests and I knew my brain had the mental capacity to do that. So the chem physics section honestly was the hardest I've ever seen out of all my practice tests. So I was really nervous because I felt like I didn't know anything and I did really poorly on that section. And it's the first section. So honestly, it really got me nervous. Like I think I'm gonna have to avoid this whole test because I thought I was not gonna be able to do well because I did so bad on the first section. So I honestly was about to give up and wanted to cry. But I just, it's honestly, you just have to keep talking to yourself and telling yourself like, you've done this before, you can do it. You are not a quitter. You're not gonna quit. You can do this. Like, do not give up. You were built for this. You were made for this. Do not quit. So I just had to literally talk myself through it. Like, it's one section. It's okay if you bomb one section. You have three other sections to make up for. Last but not least, what would I do differently if I were to do this whole process over again? What a lot of bio majors' problem is, like what I did, I know a lot of other people do, which is not a good habit, is that you learn stuff just for the exam but you don't retain it and you don't remember it. And that was my problem. So I had straight A's throughout my whole undergrad. And at the time I knew all of that stuff, but because I only learned it for the test, I didn't retain it. And I didn't remember a lot of that, which is why I was struggling a little bit at first when I was studying for the MCAT, because it was hard to retain all of that information. I would recommend in undergrad, just if you're still in undergrad, just learn, learn the stuff in the classes and retain it as much as you can because that'll help you if you have a strong base that'll help you so much more in the long run because you won't have to feel like you're starting over you already will have known stuff and you just have to practice but for me i had to like relearn everything and practice another thing is don't be distracted while reading your books like if you can read your books throughout like a summer or throughout a winter break or something where you have time, definitely do that. I was just, like I said, I had too much going on trying to read the books. And honestly, I still wasn't really retaining much from reading those. And it was just really hard to focus and retain stuff while also being so busy and doing so many other things. If I had a stronger base of knowledge and with the books, I feel like I could have done so much better or if I have more time. That's my next thing I regret. Don't cram everything like I did in three weeks. Like I had to cram those three weeks in May before my test. If I had it any other way, like I would spend a whole summer maybe preparing for it or just so much longer preparing for it than I did. If I had a chance to like actually study again and relearn, I feel like I could have got a way better score. So that brings me to the end of this video. If you have any questions or if there's anything I left out, um, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you haven't seen my last video, I talked all about the primary application and everything I put on mine. And I also have my MCAT score and GPA and every school I applied to video linked down below. So go ahead and check those out if you haven't already, but thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I good luck on your MCATs. I know you're gonna do well, don't be nervous. And you know, you always can retake it if you have to. So if you didn't do well the first time, just know you always have another chance. Stay tuned for the next Med School Mondays. We're gonna be talking about all about those secondaries and I know it's secondary season right now. So I know y'all will be really excited for that video. So. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. Bye.